Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, so my name is Stephanie Gleg, and I'm an occupational therapist by background, and I'm working at Sunny Hill Health Center for Children with the Child Development and Rehabilitation Evidence Center there. And the uh, goal of this presentation is basically to describe describe what it is we do at the Evidence Center um, in our quest to accelerate the benefits of research for children and youth uh, with special needs in BC, which is our mandate. Uh, just out of curiosity of those in the room, um, <laughs> how many of you have heard of the CDR Evidence Center before today? Okay, three, great. And have any of you accessed any of our resources? No. Okay, great. No one will be bored today. <laughs> Okay, so this is sometimes what evidence-informed healthcare can feel like. No thanks, we're too busy. Um, so here we are, we have this great thing. We've got innovation or evidence and um, nobody has time for it. Even though it could improve health outcomes, it could improve efficiency for clinicians in some cases, improve client satisfaction and, and safety. Um, and so at the Evidence Center, we've learned that there's really no sense in waving around our, our, our round wheels, <laughs> hoping that someone's going to pick them up um, and use them, that we needed a better strategy. So um, I'll describe what we've come up with so far. So this is our model, and there's no need to memorize all the words because I'm going to go through this in detail, and I've color-coded it, so we'll just go through the different sections. Um, but this basically describes our initiatives and the outputs that we, we generate. And for the most part, what we try and do with our initiatives and processes is just draw from the evidence and theories and frameworks in evidence-based practice and knowledge translation to inform what it is that we're doing. So we'll start with the people. Our evidence center um, uh, at the core is um, the leadership. And then we have a full-time clinical librarian on site. And then we have evidence center facilitators. And they are clinicians by background uh, from any discipline, and um, <clears throat> in most cases, they have some research training as well. And then we collaborate with um, all of our stakeholder groups, and so our primary stakeholder group is the frontline clinicians and leaders that are at Sunny Hill Health Center for Children, but we also uh, serve the province um, through our work at Sunny Hill as a provincial resource. And then we um, collaborate with other partners, either internal to the Provincial Health Services Authority, CHSA, or Children's and Women's Hospital, a smaller subset uh, within that, as well as external partners, so other people who um, um, are working towards the same vision or can help advance our vision. So this is the bottom half of the model, and I'm just going to go through the orange stream now. I'm just orienting you to where we are. So oh, we have three objectives at the Evidence Center, and the first one here is to augment uh, evidence-informed healthcare knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So we're talking about building competencies. And we do this for clinicians, we do this for leaders, and for knowledge brokers within our center. And then we have a separate stream for students who are on fieldwork placements at our site. And uh, in order to do this, we develop online resources to support them because we can't be everywhere at once. And we also uh, offer learning opportunities. So this is uh, one of the primary online resources that we developed. It's a, an evidence-informed practice toolkit. And it's based on Sackett's five steps of evidence-based uh, evidence practice. And what we've done is develop flowcharts, um, information sheets, templates that clinicians can access uh, to help them either develop skills or um, follow processes uh, uh, or create products that are of uh, a sort of standard quality and consistency and format and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's intended for novice to um, more advanced um, evidence-based practice practitioners. Uh, so let me see if this are we hooked up to the internet? Yeah, obviously, because we're doing a WebEx. <laughs> so I'll just open up the site. So this is um, an example of the toolkit. Each button here is one of the steps of evidence-based practice. And say I click on step two, searching for evidence. Uh, it'll just show you a flow chart. Second, there we go. And every blue 
uh, word is uh, a phrase there is a, a link to a resource. So it might be a tip sheet, information sheet, um, or a, a resource tool. Um, so we hyperlink everything. So for instance, um, say um, you're looking for sources of evidence on a particular topic. Then you could go to our sources of evidence table, which is built on the success hierarchy of pre-appraised evidence, where we want people to go first to um, pre-appraised and synthesized sources of evidence because it would save them the time and effort to appraise and synthesize them themselves. And then when this document opens, <laughs> um, it would just direct you to different sources that perhaps you hadn't seen before rather than going straight to PubMed or um, in all our, our primary literature database it might take you to um, the trip meta search engine or some other sources where you can access that more quickly. Here we go. There's our success hierarchy and um, this resource just shows you what type of what level of the hierarchy is found in particular resources and some are diagnostic specific and some are um, discipline specific and some range all across many different areas. So if you're looking for um, summaries, then here are lists of summaries for you, clinical practice guidelines, and then further down, um, synopses of syntheses and, and that sort of thing. So it's just one example of a tool. Um, that one's a bit more complex, but um, there are also um, other tools. I'll just go back to the presentation. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also use a framework at Sunny Hill that we've adapted from Iona Novak's work. So it's a traffic lighting framework where um, it basically provides a classification um, framework to describe the state of the evidence on a, a particular intervention or assessment and we developed a traffic lighting database at Sunny Hill where if anyone has traffic lighted an intervention to say it's red light, stop, we wouldn't want to use this intervention because it's proven ineffective or harmful um, or it's a green light intervention, it's been proven with high quality research to be uh, effective and we should preferentially use that or it's yellow light, uh, either there's no evidence, there's insufficient evidence uh, or there's conflicting evidence it's yellow, then we should measure outcomes at the client level to determine uh, whether it's effective or not in that context. So that's another tool that we support for clinicians. Um, and then just, I believe this um, presentation will be going on the website, the DCKC COP website. So there's a link to a, an article there if you're interested in learning more about how we develop the toolkit and the process we use to roll it out in our our center and uh, adapt it for different situations. You can read more about it there. Some other e resources that we develop are evidence syntheses. So we have an evidence for practice um, synthesis template that we use to uh, synthesize evidence on different topics of relevance to uh, child development and rehab. And on the pages where we post those evidence uh, for practice syntheses, We'll also post any implementation tools that we develop to support the implementation of that evidence. So that might be um, decision um, tools, it might be um, uh, templates, it might be uh, an assessment tool, something like that. We also post safe searches on that topic so that you can stay up to date on the evidence related to the topic of the synthesis. So since it was posted or, or updated, what's come out since then. It's just a click away. And then we partner with CADF, which is the Canadian Agency uh, um, for Drugs and Technology and Health. And they will run some searches and, and support um, the development of implementation tools and other things. And so whenever we have a topic that meets their mandate, their criteria, they might run a, a rapid response for us and send us the report and then we might create the evidence synthesis out of that, so we'll post those as well. Um, and then our student evidence-informed practice initiative, we've just recently revamped this. This is for 
students that are doing field work placements at our, um, our center across the professions. And we um, support their uh, individualized uh, EIP learning needs through mentoring, through these online resources to support different processes. And we recently did a, a lit search and a survey of clinicians and students to identify um, additional learning activities that can target their EIP learning needs. And so our plan is to create a new page on our website that will house all of those resources so that clinicians and students um, can access those to support their, their work in, in developing um, EIP competencies for students in specific to the field work setting in, in the clinical um, setting. Are there any questions about any of that that I've discussed so far? No? Okay. So learning opportunities, we developed some e-learning modules uh, as well as support um, the incorporation of evidence into e-learning modules that are created by others at our center. One example is uh, an e-learning course on knowledge brokering that we developed for a knowledge brokering initiative and that's available um, on the Learning Hub and I'll, I'll show you a link to that later. We also do lunch and learns for staff uh, on different topics that are identified as a need. So often they're run by our um, clinical librarian and they're around search topics, a certain database or um, looking at different models of evidence synthesis or uh, whatever's kind of the hot topic of the day. We provide mentoring for students um, and for clinicians and knowledge brokers around evidence-informed healthcare. We offer interactive workshops. So these might be going through some of those EIP processes, applying some of those tools in the moment to uh, prioritize a clinical question and answer it, uh, you know, seek the evidence, set up an evidence surveillance system to stay abreast of the current evidence um, or even how to apply it to practice. And we also do webinars, so things like this where we're talking about what it is that we do, but then also supporting the incorporation of evidence into other webinars related to child development and rehab that um, come out of Sunny Hill. And our last uh, point here is linkage and exchange. So we might um, support a forum for linking researchers with our clinicians. Um, so an example of that is uh, the LeisureNet forum that we had last year um, uh, in partnership with ChildNet. So they, they came and um, shared their research on participation uh, in leisure for children and youth with disabilities. And it was a way to connect clinicians and researchers and uh, families and youth uh, and to all discuss and problem solve around that issue. I'm just going to go back for a second, show you briefly the evidence for practice site. So this is uh, this is the page where the evidence synthesis are, and so uh, here's an example of collaborative goal setting for children and families in rehab. We click on this; it just gives you an introduction, and then the, this tab would give you the evidence synthesis, uh, an overview of the different uh, measurement tools that exist for collaborative goal setting, and then the CADF rapid response um, report. And then for implementation tools for this particular one, there are a few different ones. So we might link to external resources or, or adapt or develop some for ourselves. And then under evidence, you'll see the save search. So if I clicked on this, it would take me to PubMed. There's already a search strategy built in, and I see the most current um, evidence at the top. Okay. So our next objective is to facilitate evidence and form healthcare processes and outcomes. Um, because we know we can't just post something online and expect people to use it. Um, that doesn't work. And so we um, we like to facilitate the process. I'm just trying to and then notes here. Yeah, so um, a few different things that we um, do here in this stream 
our clinical librarian service supports access to evidence um, and our knowledge broking initiative facilitates evidence-based practice processes within different groups and our rapid response evidence service uh, supports leaders in incorporating evidence into health service delivery um, sorts of questions or decisions. So I'll go through each of these so that you get a sense of what we do. So our clinical librarian service, um, so we have a 1.0 um, clinical librarian, so full-time, and she supports um, clinicians or our leaders in, and students and knowledge workers in formulating clinical and health service um, questions, uh, identifying appropriate sources of evidence to answer them, developing search strategies and executing search strategies, um, support with full text retrieval, and then developing evidence surveillance strategies so you can have the evidence come to you um, from reputable sources rather than, rather than having to go out and find it all the time. And I mentioned our partnership with CADIS, so if there are questions that um, relate to health technology assessment or sort of clinical uh, health outcomes for, for children, then um, we'll work with them to see if it's something that, that they can support the search in, and if it's anything health service delivery, certainly we would be doing that uh, in-house, and we do a lot of the clinical questions in-house as well. And then shirk at the bottom there is our Sunny Hill Education uh, Resource Center, and it has a family catalog as well as a catalog for professionals uh, with some resources, and that's available throughout BC. Uh, there's a mail service that's free of charge, so if that might be of, of interest to anyone. You can um, all these each button on this page is linked to the website, so you can um, yeah just click on it and access the catalog, look up different topics, um, request something. Okay. Our knowledge brokering initiative. This is, uh, our knowledge brokers are internal, they're clinicians, and they are capacity builders and facilitators, rather than focusing on information management um, or linkage and exchange roles within knowledge brokering. We've based our um, model on the Paris framework, so it's really around facilitation. They might work with their interprofessional team or their discipline group, and um, what they do is work with the leader of that group to uh, identify goals related to evidence-informed healthcare that they can facilitate within that group, and some of it might be competency development, um, some of it might be guiding the processes to get uh, evidence, uh, to seek out the evidence or apply it to practice. Uh, they start with a needs assessment, and that includes identifying barriers to evidence uh, uptake within that, that particular context, and then they develop customized strategies um, to fit their context. So there's the Paris framework where we're looking at the interaction between evidence, context, and facilitation. Um, there's a, uh, an article that uh, is linked here. It's a little bit old, but it describes how our, our KB initiative was started. So you can learn more about that there. It's evolved since then, but that gives you an overview. And then this button here will take you to our knowledge broking page um, where we have uh, different resources for knowledge brokers, including the e-learning modules that I mentioned earlier. So how to develop competency, what's the evidence on knowledge brokering, how to conduct a needs assessment or facilitate evidence-based practice within your sector, evaluating evidence-based practice. Um, our knowledge brokers, um, have quarterly community of practice meetings, so we all meet, we problem solve around what's going on in the different sectors, um, come up with ideas. That's a great forum for the Evidence Center to share our resources and ideas with the KBs, and then they can take them back to their sectors, because it would be pretty hard for us to reach everyone um, on site on our own. Um, and then they can also customize the delivery of those messages or the application of the resources and things to that, the group's context. All right, and the last stream in facilitating evidence-informed practice is the Rapid Response Evidence Service, and this is something that we've just recently launched. And it's a process to support leaders 
uh, either program managers, um, administrators, um, professional practice leaders in incorporating evidence into their decision making about their health service delivery. So we've been focusing um, on some quality improvement initiatives that they're undertaking or um, the strategic objectives of the, the organization and the, the subset of those that uh, relate to the program. So um, this diagram is busy, but it just shows the process that we use during our rapid response service. So the red row is the role of the leader, the green role is the role of the clinical librarian, and the dark blue row uh, is the evidence center point person. And each program has its own um, point person that works with the, the program manager to prioritize the, the areas, the questions that um, would best benefit from having evidence to uh, move forward. And then as you can see, we're available to support through the process of um, developing the question, searching for evidence, and then actually implementing it into practice, whether that's developing tools or supporting in some other way. Um, we're a resource to them to do that and then to evaluate the process as well. And then the purple is, uh, the purple row is just the resources that we would use. So this is our, as a point person, this is our resource sheet and we just click on those purple boxes whenever we're at that stage to get the, the tools that we need to carry out those steps. Maybe I'll stop there and ask if there are any questions about this. You don't need to understand the whole process, but just it's sort of a snapshot to say this is this is what we what we do, and those are kind of the overarching aims. And where 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 possible, we involve CADAS to um, answer those questions that aren't the primary health service or human resource type questions, and that helps increase our capacity. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'd say, I guess, November of last year, we sort of launched, so we're just um, working through the process. So I think each program has had one rapid response um, either carried out or almost um, completed. So we'll be evaluating the um, initiative and, and then carrying it on. <laughs> All right, so our last objective is around driving knowledge translation and practice-informed research. And so in order to do this, uh, we like to link with others with whom we can share or exchange knowledge or evidence, um, with whom we can collaborate on research or promote research, of research findings that are of relevance to child development and rehab. We also um, love partners that help to broker knowledge and we can broker their knowledge and vice versa. And we're always looking for more. And uh, we also um, hope to promote the development of clinically driven research that will be uh, applicable to clinicians um, that fill a gap in the research um, that would help clinical practice advance. So some of the connections in our network are research groups or institutes or networks, organizations with shared interests like Child Health BC, for instance, academic partners for research and education, and then inter-organizational departments, such as learning and development and um, professional practice group. Uh, and one other aim of ours is to promote Sunny Hill researchers and the work that they're doing, so getting the word out about research um, in child development and rehab that would benefit um, children and families or support um, clinical, clinical work of uh, therapists and other clinicians. We developed a technology and social media strategy last year and we're basically trying to um, enhance our communication and collaboration through these tools. And uh, this is kind of a busy slide, but again, you can click on any of these icons to link to them and, and learn more about it on, on your own time. Um, the Learning Hub is up at the top here. That's where some of the e-learning uh, resources are. Team site's just internal. Uh, resource for us. Sometimes we share our presentations and research posters and things on SlideShare. Um, this is the website that um, houses most of the resources that I've shown you today and I'll take you to that front page after so that you can find them all on your own. 
Um, we have a Tech for Therapist blog that's um, written one, by one of our Evidence Center staff, and it summarizes current research on technology for rehab um, in pediatrics, primarily. Um, this BC project's in prog progress site. I'll just click to this. This is a website where anyone who's doing a project, whether it's research or innovation in BC, uh, can post their project on here, and it's a way to share uh, what you're doing, um, garner interest. So, for instance, this is one. There's been 272 views on this. Um, it's just a very brief description of what the project is, who to contact. So it's a nice tool for recruitment to link to if you don't have another web page. Um, but it's nice to have one place where all the projects are listed so we can stay um, informed about what's going on uh, in BC. And then we also have a, a virtual tour that we just launched. I believe this is the right link, yes. And some of our other programs at Sunny Hill are highlighted here as well, but we do have a research module that talks about the research themes that we have at Sunny Hill, who our researchers are, um, and what, what projects are going on. So if you want to learn more about um, research and maybe connect with researchers at Sunny Hill, this is one, one means to do that, and we put our study recruitment um, information up here as well. All right, um, and then Twitter, so we're on Twitter, and um, uh, we the stuff that we tend to tweet is uh, key messages from conferences, so we'll, we'll um, tweet live from conferences and, and other events. We share evidence on uh, related to child development and rehab, and um, highlight Sunny Hill research, um, and we hosted our first tweet chat a few weeks ago on leisure participation for children with disabilities, so we hope to have some more tweet chats. Um, so we'd encourage people to join us. I'll, I'll show you the Twitter handle afterwards. And then how do we evaluate all of this? So um, this is a, just a snapshot of our electronic performance wall, and I did present a webinar uh, through InspireNet on our, our performance wall and how we use it. If you're part of the BCKT COP, you'll recognize this shortly when it, we have a, an adapted version that I'm making for the community of practice. So uh, you'll get to, you'll recognize it. Anyway, if you want to learn more about how we use that, the link is just at the bottom there to the webinar. So that's really all I want to share. This is our, our website here, so I'll just link quickly here. This is the homepage of childdevelopment.ca where you can access the resources. So you'll recognize some of these buttons, e-learning, tech for therapists, BC projects, evidence for practice, and the evidence center button here is, is the home to those other resources that I mentioned. So if you have any questions, you can email me um, or connect on Twitter, uh, either myself uh, at StephLeg or through the evidence center at Sunnyhill underscore Evan. Thank you. We'll just stop the recording now.